I had a friend of mine ask me this morning, he said, you haven't done a video in a few days. Uh, is everything okay? Well, um, I usually only say things whenever the Holy Spirit gives me the unction to say it. I don't take it upon myself to say something because if I do, I'll give a disjointed message. It'll be an uncalculated approach and it won't do anybody any good and it's going to cause confusion. Even though I may have a little spark here and there, but you know, just having a piece of a puzzle does not mean you have the complete picture. You need to just be still, you know, and, and he will fill you at the right time to say something. But what I want to talk about today, what he has filled my heart to talk about, is the fact of where is the line? Where is the line? What do I mean by that? Well, the Bible tells us that, although I speak of the tongues of men and of angels, but if I have not love, then I am nothing. But the Bible also tells us, too, when Jesus says that my people die due to a lack of knowledge. Now, that statement could be, you could break it down into a lot of different levels. But I believe very strongly it is a it is a uh, aspect of spiritual understanding. Now, spiritual understanding allows you to put things in correct perspective. When you combine that with your human experience, which is how you're going to be delivering your message to people, your spiritual understanding could come across as being very incompassionate, abrasive, arrogant. Where's the line? Where's the line between the spiritual maturity which is where Jesus tells us we need to be, but still show love and understanding. Whew. That's a tight line, isn't it? And it's going to come down really to per each person. This is why don't try to do everything. Just do specifically what God gives you to do in that very, very next step. And many times, God will tell you to be still. Your stillness and doesn't mean being complacent in your walk with Him, but it could be, it could be a, a time of reflection and a time of growth, a spiritual growth that will help build you up to be, for you to become an effective messenger. You know, we look at time as a factor. God doesn't. God doesn't. And I, I hear so many ministries that are saying, you know, you know, time is of the essence. You know, we're in the last days. You've got to save as many, many people as you can. Don't, tell, don't listen to anybody who tries to tell you what you should do. The Holy Spirit will tell you, will show you, guide you gently where you need to be and what you need to focus on. When you do that, it'll be done in the correct way. He may have you minister only to one person. You may think, but there are thousands, thousands of people out there who need. He may have you instruct thousands. He may have you minister to one person, and that person may in turn pass a message on other people. You don't know that. The strength of faith and the import and the beauty of it is because it's never any further than the next step. It's never further than that very thing in front of you. A light into my feet and a lamp in my path. But it's only that next step is as far as it shines. As brilliant a light as, as he shines, it's never further than that. only that next step in front of you. Now, many of us have taken our eyes, and I am guilty. I am guilty of this as well of taking our eyes and not praying in the Spirit as much as we should and looking to a lot of these things in this world that are coming at us. Right now, I'm in America, and the whole thing with the COVID-19 and the riots and everything is being hammered left and right, and I'm surrounded by a lot of people, most people, nearly all people, who are strictly digesting the things of this earth and not looking in the spirit. 
the news, the news, the news, the news, family, friends, 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 listening to this stuff coming from over here, listening to that stuff coming from the news over here, listening to this group over here, this group over there, the more news, more news. Have you heard about this? Have you heard about this? Well, this person told me over here. Well, this person told me over there. You know, you can actually, your desire to want to bond with people, to understand, can help can really detract and take away from your joy. The knowledge that we have in the spirit is not meant for us to walk in arrogance. Sometimes we do inadvertently. Some people do it deliberately, but I think most of us do it inadvertently because we want to say, hey, I found it. But a lot of people don't know where to look. We're seeing things through a light. A lot of people are walking in darkness. They don't know where to go. They have no idea where to go. They know about Jesus and the cross. They've read it and they read it in a Bible. They believe it in their heart. But they haven't exercised a lot of their prayer life. And as a result of that, they're just they're lost. They're not lost as in, you know, the, the, they're not going to go to heaven if they believe in Jesus, but they're lost and they're lost in their direction. They're letting their physical eyes and their ears, all their physical senses dictate how they're supposed to feel. And at times, I felt a lot of the same way when I was trying to bond. There was a movie that came out years ago called Rush. I don't know if you've ever seen this or not, but the story is you have these two undercover narcotics officers that are trying to expose this drug, this drug ring. So they, try, they impersonate, you know, people that kind of go into these gangs or whatever. I forgot the, what, what their names were. But by doing that, they, they have to make people believe in this group that they're part of this group. So they had to take some of these drugs so that people would believe them so they could help expose who these, these drug dealers were. And by doing that, they became addicted. They became addicted. And part of the film was how they were able to bounce back from... From that addiction it was hard their principles were set going in they had a clear head and a clear vision starting out but as their journey progressed and they kind of dove deep into their mission they lost they they just became addicted to the world they became addicted to the very thing they were trying to expose their hearts were sincere but they got lost on their path I think a lot of us are in that same aspect. I'm, I'm guilty of that to a degree because a part of me started to get depressed too. There were circumstances that came at me on this earth that were, I was looking, my eyes took off of the spirit and I was just focusing on family experiences and friend experiences and trying to make the most of everything here and they weren't being made to, the, to, to my expectations. And I started getting down. Today, thankfully, his spirit just lifted me up again. Where is the line between the spiritual understanding and the love? Where is that line? And when I prayed and I went back in prayer, deep in it, he gave me the answer that I already knew in my heart. And he told it to me anyway. He said, there is no line. There's only me. It's not a line. It's a person. It's a heart. It's a God. It's a Father. That's it. Years ago, he gave me the simple instruction, stay by me. Did I listen to it? <laughs> not all the time. I did a lot of the time. I didn't do that to earn a merit badge. I did it so I could stay in peace and love and understanding of my destiny. I'm not like condemned. Could I have missed, could I have used my time better? Absolutely. But again, I am loved and cherished in a realm outside of time by a God who's outside of time. And in that, I just walk in that joy now. We can fall out of joy. And the only reason we fall out of joy is because we take our eyes off of him 
We don't pray with God in the spirit as much as we should. We let the world try to suffice. It's kind of like a drug. It's just like that movie Rush. You know, we they became addicted to drugs. We can come become addicted back to the things of this earth. We can become addicted to the news. We can become addicted to the advice of people who don't know him. We can become addicted to the emotions and circumstances and let those circumstances dictate the way that we think about everything. Without, and, we, and we forget who stays at the core, at the center of it all. And that's our loving Father. There is no line. There's only him. And we do need reminding. But it should not be any pastor. It should not be me. It should not be any human being that brings us back. All I think all of us have we have to do as messengers is shine a light on the one who, who can show you. We do that, he will show you because there is nobody who could show you the truth more convincingly than our Heavenly Father. All this message was, was he's over there. Pray, walk right to him. Ba-boom. And he'll show everything to you. He'll reveal everything to you. You have the mind of Christ. He lives in us. An omnipotent, omnipresent God. He chose to live in each one of us. We don't look at ourselves in a mirror and say, this is it. He, he looks at our heart and says, that, that's my home. I'm living in you. That's pretty cool. I love having a papa like that. And he just so happens to be God. And he's your papa too. That's awesome. God bless y'all. I hope this blesses you. Have a wonderful night. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.